Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of the People Progressing Podcast. And today I have one of my ex-students uh, who uh, will light up your world. Her name is N Nicole Campuzano and I'm uh, excited to have you on. We've been trying to get you on and do this for a long time and I'm just glad that we finally got it. And what I finally, what I always do, Nicole, is tell everybody, I, have, I ask everybody this question, where did you grow up? What did you like to do as a kid? And we kind of go from there. So where did you grow up? What did you like to do as a kid? Some of the things you had fun with, some of the people that maybe had some influence on you growing up and some, some of those things. Okay. So um, I was born in, here in Colorado, Inglewood at Swedish Hospital. And we moved to Highlands Ranch when I was in third grade. So, and I've kind of come full circle coincidentally. So I'm back in Highlands Ranch. <laughs> Um, some of my biggest influencers growing up, I would just say my family. I mean, if it weren't for them, I mean, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at and definitely, um, you know, different areas of my life or, you know, throughout grade school, middle school, high school, college, you name it. I mean, names aren't coming to mind right now, but I think that the greatest impact we could have is daily influencers. And I was going to dive into that a little bit later. Yeah, and we will. Um, and uh, you went to high school at Thunder Ridge where, where I taught and, and so forth. And where did you go after high school? CU Boulder. And what was your major at CU Boulder? Journalism and mass communications. So when you were, when you had that in mind to go up there and, and major in that, what was your kind of plans in life? What, what what were you thinking you wanted to do? Well, I did a senior project at Channel 2 uh, with Tamara Banks and Dave Young. And I had always loved writing. I had always felt like it was a means to express myself. And so when I was kind of tapping into my likes and interest, I thought journalism and uh, Miss McMullen, in fact, from Thunder Ridge was very influential in that decision to attend CU. So uh, I took the broadcast avenue and then kind of took some windy roads along the way. Yeah, and let's get into it. Um, while at CU, correct? Correct. Uh, you had something happen to you. Why don't you describe that to our listeners so they can get a full effect of the who you are and, and the amazing person that you are. Oh, thank you. So senior year at CU, I was in my second semester and I was going through a really rough time, which um, I have my own podcast, which you know about, and I share quite a bit of detail uh, where my mindset was at that time and uh, kind of some ill decisions that I made. So I fell 30 feet from a uh, apartment floor building and sustained a spinal cord injury which was cervical. So it essentially affected chest down. And um, I learned a lot from that experience, but um, I've learned to not necessarily hone in on one aspect of your life, it just kind of knowing that everything happens for a reason. I've strongly become a believer in that. And knowing that now I'm knowing that it's happened so that I could essentially help other others with similar situations uh, with spinal cord injuries. And I just started my own nonprofit last August and it's my new baby, but um, I'm excited. I mean, I'm just thrilled that essentially nothing happens in vain. So I'm learning to accept every facet of it and just run with it. Yeah. And your life is fascinating. Um, I want to go back to that day when this happened to you and you're in the hospital, uh, the paramedics came and uh, I think I, I remember you telling me they actually thought that you weren't going to make it. Is that, is it, is that a true story there? I strongly believe that because when they arrived, they did not follow protocol. I was not um, put in a neck brace. I was pretty much put on the body board, put into the ambulance. You know, um, I blacked out in that moment. 
And when I came to, I was at the ER at St. Anthony's Hospital and I transferred to the hospital bed and again, a second time without a neck brace. And a chaplain was there and he was praying with me, the Our Father. And I was like, is this it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, there's just so many things that just pass through your mind. Like when you're saying the Our Father, you're just like, as a Catholic, it's like, oh my gosh, is this my last rites? Yeah. <laughs> So what was going through your mind there? Were you thinking, um, I mean, you probably weren't thinking about being paralyzed and so forth at that point. You're probably thinking about just surviving. Oh, yeah. Yep. And once you made it through that initial part and then you found out uh, the extent of the injury, right. what was your mindset at the start of that? Were you bitter? Were you mad? Were you frustrated? Were you... You know, what were you going through? Complete shock, complete shock. I mean, from the time I fell, I was actually cognizant and aware, but um, not knowing anything about spinal cord injuries and just the impact on the nervous system and the overall bodily functions, um, it was shock. I mean, I remember just a few days at in at St. Hospital or St. Anthony's asking a doctor, will I walk again? That was one of my first questions. And he says, we don't know. Um, just because it takes the spinal cord injury quite a while to kind of understand what's going on in your body. I mean, even some of the greatest athletes have sustained spinal cord injuries and, you know, um, it's scientifically proven if you have like a way to ice that area or, you know, um, I don't know the term for it, but if you have some of the greatest medical, you know, professionals there, I think it would have made a different impact, but hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just knew I was paralyzed when my mom had asked me to squeeze her hand and I couldn't. So in that moment, I knew, and of course it was shock, but I didn't know anything about spinal cord injuries. And it's just been the life experience along the way, getting to know each and every day because every injury is different. Nothing is the same. There's no, you know, notes or guidelines or, you know, how to's with it all. It's just right. learning as you go. It's amazing. Um, I would have, I I would assume, I, I guess you should never use the word assume, that there was some bitterness that happened at some point in time. Um, what did that feel like? Uh, you know, I believe that grieving is a daily process. I truly believe that because there is no one day that I'm not reminded of my injury because, you know, functionally, you know, there's things I can and can't do. And every day is a new experience. But I believe there was a time about a year or two in where I was just very upset with God, I was angry. Yeah. I was basically why me because I was one that made all the right decisions. Um, you know, I had my future in front of me. I had my goals set and it was like, why, you know, that one, one decision that I made that necessarily just changed my life, changed my family's life, my friend's life, everybody that was involved in my life. And also they didn't know the impact. They didn't know if I was going to make it. They didn't know if I was going to walk again. They didn't know you know, what damage had been done to my spinal cord. And so there was a lot of unknowns. And um, I just believe grieving is daily when you have something impact your life so greatly. Was, was there something, Nicole, that kind of got you through that anger, through that grieving? Um, was there a specific event or was it just time? Um because we're going to get into what you're doing now 
and how much you're helping people. And you've turned this situation into a, a situation of service to others, which is amazing. And we'll get into that. But I, I want to know your mindset a little bit to help people who might be going through something similar to what you went through to inspire them that they can get through it too. Was there, was there something there that uh, an event or an aha moment that made you say, okay, this is it. This is what I got. Let's go. Well, it just traces back to like your initial question. I think that there's nature and nurture within all of us. And, you know, in those moments when I had times I wanted to give up, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it or I doubted myself and kind of where I was at and what I was doing and kind of my future. It was just tapping back into the basics, you know, um, the basics of my character and what it was built upon. Um, yeah, I believe strongly in the three virtues of the Catholic faith. Again, it was really faith, love, and hope, and that facilitates in every aspect of my life. But just digging deep and thinking, who am I? What am I about? And why am I in this world? And, you know, what am I looking forward to? Um, what have I done right? Um, where do I want to go with even the mistakes that I had made, learning from those mistakes and just being better from it. I really think it's a choice to want to be better and where that takes you. It's just unfathomable. I mean, I'm sitting here with you talking about this foundation and all the dreams I have with it. And I'm just like every day, just chipping away at that and knowing that there will be a day where it will come true. Just knowing and believing in that. Unbelievable. That's maybe the most powerful thing anybody's ever said in my podcast. Because <laughs> I, I, that's unbelievable. Because I, you know, I tell people all the time that I think one of the greatest powers we have as human beings is the power of choice. And you just said that you had a choice there and you made that choice of your three virtues and and you made that choice to be better, get better, help others get better, to help and serve others. And I always say to people, when you're feeling down and out, when you're feeling helpless, help others. Um, yes. And you've chosen to do this. It's, it's such a powerful statement that you just made, because I, I guarantee you there's someone listening to this who's going through some hard times some difficult times where they're, they're questioning things. They're, they're wondering why they're, they're, they're doing that. That's just a, that's a natural thing for us to do when, especially when a tragedy happens. Yes. And you just told people how to get through that, how you got through it. And you're giving them ways to, and inspiring them to be better from, from what they're going through. Right. Beautifully said. Um, uh, let's get into you you mentioned your goals and dreams and, and what your visions are and what your what I like to call your true purpose. We'll get to that later. What are you doing now? You've just started a nonprofit. And tell us about the nonprofit and why you started it. Well, I want to kind of trace back to when you had asked me about going to college and um I really believe that every brick that has been laid from onset, I mean, you know, life, every brick that you lay from day one builds you up to your ultimate destiny. And um, God, so awesome. everything, I mean, when you listen to my podcast, I give examples of full circle moments that you're just like, wow, I didn't know. I didn't realize why that had happened, but now I do. And those are the moments that keep me going because it's like they're constantly I'm reminded God like gives me reminders like you're coming full circle again here it is this is why so the why's always get answered mm -hmm. I truly believe in that so with this foundation it's like this is my why this is my purpose I truly believe it it's unbelievable 
This is so powerful. I want to I want to kind of take a step back real quick because I want you to tell us about your daughter. Um, she's an amazing little thing. Uh, she's not getting little anymore. Uh, it's funny how time flies. But tell us about your daughter and the miracle of that and how well she's doing and and everything and, and what she brings to your life. You tapped into my heart right there. I know. My daughter, oh my gosh, she is amazing. You have met her and she is just light. She is ultimate light. And I believe too, she's meant to be here. And I look at her, I'm getting teary eyed. Yeah. Um, just talking about her. I look at her and I see so much potential. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, and I also know that she's another reason I'm here. Yeah, I really believe that. Yeah, uh, and she's a she's doing really well in soccer. She's doing really well in school. Uh, how old is she now? She's fifth grade. And yeah, she's ten in fifth grade, and she has a whole world in front of her. She has t- so much talent, and she's beautiful inside and out, and. I I can't say enough about her. I'm like, where do I start? Yeah. Well, I'll help you. Yeah. Okay? Because when I reconnected with you, it was in a park. And Nicole was in her wheelchair. And she had driven her wheelchair to the park to play soccer with her daughter. And I think that was about two or three years ago. And um, it was amazing to me to watch you be a mother. You're an incredible mother. And again, nothing's stopping you from being who you are. And that's part of this story as well. Um, You're willing to drive your wheelchair down to the park and play soccer with your daughter while you're in your wheelchair. And you're probably the first one at her soccer games. You're probably the first one to give her a hug after her game. Uh, You're you're such a support system for her. And I, I will say this too. She's a huge support system for you. Uh, she's amazing uh, how much she helps and, and supports and, and so forth with you. So I'm going to brag about your daughter because I think she's an amazing little girl who I can't, you know, it's, it's fun to think about, but I know her future is so bright and I want her to stay young, but I can't wait to watch her grow. If that makes sense. So um, you're amazing. Let's get into the nonprofit. Uh, why and what is it? Why are you doing it? And what is it? So kind of tracing back to my childhood, um, I can remember back when I was two, three years old. I've always loved singing. I'd be in the backyard, skipping around, making songs, singing to my dogs. Um, it was something early on that I would, I would literally imagine my dogs, like my audience, I would sing to them and it was just my outlet. Yeah. Like I needed anything. And I do have an older brother, but you know, when he'd shoo me away and I'd be alone, I'm like, well, who do I got? You know, me, I got me and my dogs. So I'd be in the backyard singing and I realized growing up like, wow. I could actually hit that note and, um, you know, I can sing that song. And it was just like, I could go in my room, I could close my door, turn up the music and just escape. And that has always been me. I mean, ask my parents and my neighbors. I remember just blaring my music and I'm sure my neighbors weren't too happy or (laughs) whatnot, but it was my outlet. And so as I grew up, I was like, I have a voice. Like, what is this? Where did this come from? My daughter has it too. Oh, but that's um, awesome. yeah, she loves music. She loves singing. So that's kind of when I was thinking about this nonprofit. I'm like, what do I want it to be called? And I'm like, of course I want my name in it. You know, victory yeah. of the people is my name, Nicole. And so I wanted that in there. And then I thought of voice. I thought, well, musically I have a voice, but I also have the voice to speak, to share, to, uh, as you said, inspire, but I like to say influence, um, you know, be a leader within my community and, 
I guess, you know, I was using marketing and advertising and my background and knowledge that I had from higher education and just my interest in knowing that there's a niche market there. There is nothing like it. And it's just fascinating that there's a space for it. Mm -hmm. Like it just felt like I belong in this space to give, as you said, um, share, mentor, uh, offer peer mentorship, um, support network. And there's so many possibilities and I'm just excited. So yeah. this is a foundation. But well, that I, was the origination of it all. Yeah. yeah and I, I think one of the main goals you have is to educate people on what happened. So you, you had mentioned to me that you were at Craig Hospital and they were doing a bunch of rehabilitation and so forth. But the part that's missing is the mental side of what you're going to go through and how you're going to go through it for not only you, but for your family. Yes. So part of your, your nonprofit is for people to be better educated and better prepared for the mental side of being in a wheelchair of what that's going to, what, what that all entails for you, the family and everyone else. Um, so part of this is to educate people about that, correct? Yes. I, I believe a lot of it's sharing experiences that I've had right. throughout this past 17 years with the spinal cord injury. Yeah. And, you know, I hope for another 17, it's like, it's a marathon. Yeah. It's not a yeah. race it's a marathon. And I know that there's others that have said that with, you know, different circumstances, but it's true. I mean, you just got to have the mental state, like former athlete. I mean, you know, I played soccer myself, as you yeah. know, it's just an endurance. It's endurance. It's a marathon and day in and day out knowing that, you know, when I experience things, I'm just going to be able to share it with somebody else, you know, post-injury. So, so give me a couple examples, Gampy, about um, an experience that somebody needs to know. Um, going to the grocery store, uh, whatever it might be. Just give me an experience that can educate our listeners on what you go through or what somebody in your family would have to go through. Okay. Well, I wanted to open this gate because I was crying earlier. I couldn't talk, yeah. but uh, definitely with my daughter. I mean, I'd have people call me, Nicole, you got to get here. There's this girl that she, you know, she's 20. She's thinking about getting married. She wants a family. Um, she may want kids. Can you come talk to her? So of course I go. Um, and this but, is a girl who's in a wheelchair. Yes. Post okay. injury in Craig. Okay. you know, wanting to know whether it's a possibility. Right. Sadly, there's a bit of a stereotype there, or I would like to say ignorance, ill education, whatever the word may be. But um, oftentimes I get people like, wait, is she yours? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just immediate, like, how does this happen? Mm -hmm. So on post-injury, I mean, as you know, I dated a gentleman from our high school mm -hmm. and we were thinking about a family and getting married and all of that. So um, I had watched a special on TLC and they shine light on this woman that had a spinal cord injury and they made it scary. I mean, she was on bed rest. She had so many medical complications and so I was like I don't think I can do this yeah yeah so that was my first thought but of course you're in love and you're like okay let's let's see what what happens that's what it was so when I found out I was pregnant um I was elated but I was also deathly afraid I was mm -hmm. like I don't want to be like that woman on TLC yeah 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 <laughs> you know? yeah but again, every pregnancy is different. Every woman's different. So I had experienced it in my own way, but, um, I became pregnant and, um, throughout that nine months, I literally 
was meditating and manifesting what it was going to be like when I was going to give birth. And um, people can't believe I gave birth naturally um, just because they're like, wait, those that still works. And yeah. it was, I really believe it was mental. I literally would close my eyes every day and envision like giving birth to her. So when the nurse said, are you ready to push? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. And six pushes later, she was, she was here. She was brought to the world. <laughs> Lucky number six, six pounds, six ounces, January 6th. So I have goosebumps right now. Um, yep. He so, was born on Tiffany, by the way. So, and so was my gift. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's go through that again. So, again, educating people. Yes. Right. You can get pregnant with a spinal cord injury. Yes. You can have a baby with a spinal cord injury. You can raise a family with a spinal cord injury. Right. And and people might not know that. Yes. Not only the people who have a spinal cord injury, but the people who don't need to know those kind of things so they don't ask you a question is she really yours right i've gotten that yeah yeah and and that's one of the reasons for your nonprofit is to educate the world on what people with a spinal cord injury deal with and go through on a daily basis right and that's an unbelievable story to show how that works um so where do you want to take this? Where do you want to go with this? How big do you want to make it to be? You know, you had mentioned to me that at Craig, they have the physical rehabilitation side. And your big goal in this is to build a place that deals with more of the mental side. Is that correct? I want to make it a, pa a place of belonging because... I mean, I experienced Craig, but there's other rehab hospitals and they concentrate quite a bit on the PTOT, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and it's many, many long hours from 6 a.m. to 6 at night. You are up taking vitals, you're, um, you know, taking your pills, you're getting ready, you're getting, you go to the gym in the gym is where you practice, you know, balance, stability, um, on the physical side, you're learning how to get your shoe back on, you're learning how to get your clothes back on, you're learning, you know, things that you had learned as a child, right. which is very humbling. It's a very humbling and frustrating experience, but with each day you're like you're more determined I mean I was more determined day in and day out like I got to do this you know and then the OT I mean I had to learn to write again I write differently and it was like learning my my mark again in yeah. essence you know I used to write um and it was so perfect and now it's cursive and my daughter says I can't read it and I'm like well yeah. you gotta learn mom's writing yeah, yeah. but things like that so back to I just noticed you know many a nights alone I was alone a lot in my mental space and sometimes that could be good and sometimes that could be bad because you may overthink things and you know get afraid and doubt and fear and all those things but um back to the why it's like community is so important community and networking is so important like we need each other whether we're quote unquote disabled or not um i do believe strongly that um we're all blind to the future so in essence it makes us all disabled oh wow you're blowing me away can't be you're blowing me away so i i want to go back to this too you you have how many de degrees? You just finished a degree, did you, did you not? I'm going to keep going. <laughs> uh -huh. I have a bachelor's in journalism. Yeah. As I said, and I have a master's in marketing administration with a specialty in marketing. So business administration, excuse me, but marketing. So if anybody wants a unbelievable employee, uh, get a hold we'll, we'll we'll figure out how to get a hold of campy here because uh, you just finished that master's didn't you 
No, so I finished 2006 uh, journalism and then 2014 masters and I just finished April with billing and coding. Yeah, so you have that's what I, that's what you just finished. Yes. Yeah, the bill, billing and coding so you can do all of that. And all I gar- and I guarantee you you will not find anybody who works harder. Damn straight. I <laughs> just love it. Um, <laughs> it's so awesome. Um, let's let's go back to. I remember you telling me one time uh, when we first started talking about your nonprofit that the day when you get out of Craig Hospital, and for those of you who don't know, Craig Hospital in Denver is it's really one of the top rehabilitation hospitals in the country, is it not? And once you get out of that you were mentioning how unprepared you were mentally moving forward that they they did everything. Like you said, from six to six with occupational PT and all those different things. And then all of a sudden you're out and you're, you're in the real world and the, the, the mental part is the part that's kind of missing with that rehabilitation. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Describe that, how that was for you so they have workshops which they have topics of conversation everything from you know bladder bowel management to sex to you know um skin sores wounds etc so they do prepare you but it's also like having a textbook you read the textbook and you get to your internship and you're like, wait, I didn't learn about mm-hmm, this. Mm-hmm. You know, similarly. Great analogy. Get into your profession and you're like, oh gosh, where, where did I learn that? You know, and it's, it's just different. I mean, you learn, you have the tools, but you don't have the toolbox. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the best analogy I have for that one. But um, you just learn as you go. Everything is learning as you go. But what you want to do with the nonprofit is kind of speed up that learning and help people help people understand that. So maybe they don't have to be blindsided by something down the road. You want to kind of educate people more on that mental side of it with this nonprofit. Yes. And I'll give you an example. So my neighbor at uh, Craig Hospital, once you get to the east side, it means you're just about ready to go home. I had heard that he went home and sadly committed suicide. And that was very impactful for me because Mm -hmm. sadly, some don't have the support that they need or knowing that they can continue because they have that mental, emotional community support. Just knowing that, hey, you know, you could pick up the phone and talk to me all night. Just please don't take your life, please, because there is hope. There is hope for the future. You might be in the dark, but there will be light. There's always a flip switch. There is, you know, light and dark, but there light will win well and i i um i listen to a podcast ed my a lot and ed my says this a lot you catch things you don't you don't necessarily learn things you catch things and what people catch from you is this you can have a an accident you can find out that you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest Mm -hmm. of your life you can find out that you have to go to rehabilitation from six in the morning to six at PM at night and go through all that. Then you get out and you're not real sure and things hit you in the face like a ton of bricks that you didn't weren't prepared for. Mm-hmm. But you can still get a degree. You can still get your master's degree. You can still get your certification in coding and billing. You can still have a child You can still be an unbelievable mother. You can still live in your own apartment. You can still go watch your daughter play soccer. You can still start your own um, nonprofit to help others, to serve others, to help others. You can still be an unbelievable daughter to your mom and your dad. Um, I could go on and on and on and on that you can still be. 
And what you're saying is one thing, but what can't be what you're you're demonstrating is another. And that's the powerful thing, right? You're sitting in your own apartment right now. Uh, your daughter's going to come home from school and give you a hug today. Yeah. Uh, she might have soccer practice that you got to get her to. Um, you know, all those things are going on. You had to get your master's degree while you're doing all this, or you you got your master's degree. I didn't, I, that's not the right word when I said you had to. Um, you accomplished that. You accomplished getting your billing and coding. Um, you, you're just an amazing person. You also said that you can call me anytime to talk about any of this stuff. Yep. So what you're demonstrating to people is... Um, just so powerful you can make it through this and you can live a life of joy and happiness now it's not all joy and happiness you you know there's certain we're not going to sugarcoat it there's certain things that are really really hard for you to do but i can tell you uh since the three years that we've reconnected i've never heard you complain not one time i've never heard you say a bad thing about another person not one time I always can get you to smile whenever I want to. And that smile lights up the room like it always has. Um, your smile lights up the whole world. It always has. And oh, you better you, stop. <laughs> uh, you're an amazing person. Um, you, you, you're just making me, this has been unbelievable today. And what you're doing for people is unbelievable. And I, I have three more questions for you. And I always ask, everybody these three questions my book is the three p's what uh, finding your purpose perspective and passion what is your purpose what's your purpose in life you've kind of described some of it but what's your deep purpose in life i want to leave a legacy especially for my daughter uh, funny <laughs> funny story it's a, so she knows I started this business. She knows why I'm doing it. She helped me design my logo. She helped me design my business card. She she has input in everything I do, of course, as I do her, but all aspects of her life. Um, but I told her, you know, you're gonna take this on when I'm I'm gone because that's her purpose is to help others. I truly believe that, as you said. I mean, we're all here for one another and I think that's something that our world needs to see right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. society our culture yeah. we're really here for one another it's sad that some people don't see that because the selfishness but we won't dive into that but I just oh. I really want to be that selfless person you you find your purpose when your purpose is greater than yourself there's no better example of that than the person I'm talking to right now. So I skip over perspective and I go to passion. What's your passion in life? Mm. Passion. That's so many facets of that. Um, I would just say to share my story. It's so powerful. Um, just giving insight through my experiences too, because like I said, nothing in vain. Uh, I truly believe that as well. You know, those hard days, and those hard moments, I just know I'm going to pull through and it's going to be a story. Unbelievable. I always say your passion equals your purpose and your purpose equals your passion. You just said that because... Your purpose is to serve others, help others, leave a legacy for your daughter to do the same. Passion is kind of the same thing. You love helping and serving others. Now, what holds those two things together is your perspective. What is your perspective on life? What's your perspective? Hmm. You kind of said it in your passion with the vein never give up I mean it sounds cliche but um as you know my family again is very influential and uh we've never given up we we as a team have never given up I mean 
we've had some really dark low moments but at the end of the day it's really just respecting each other appreciating each other knowing that there was a time I could have been gone um you know um but I just believe that there's a greater purpose for us all and uh I'm so appreciative of my family my friends my mentor you uh my board my everything it's just being really appreciative I think grateful um and humble and humble that you don't know it all yet and you never will but just learning every day day in and day out about yourself others your capabilities uh believing in yourself my dad has a saying that you're your own best friend and it's true wow well how can people get a hold of you how can people support your um nonprofit? Nicole's voice. How can how can people do this? How can people get more involved? I think it's in knowing how you can impact your community. So, I mean, the website's going up this week. It's pretty elementary, <laughs> um, but um, I have a business card that I had given you. So, if they want to reach out to you, they can reach me. Um, how else how what, what's your what's your website address do you have it yet or no uh i do not know that off top of mind i believe it's nicole's voice dot community but i could be wrong but they could probably just search nicole's voice yes i would think Eventually it will be searchable yes. okay and then we people can get involved and, and support and do some things that way okay. um i i want to thank you for coming on um amazing uh, you amazed me the first time I reconnected with you when I saw you in the park. I probably freaked you out when I came walking up to to see you and so so forth. But um, you're an amazing human being. Uh, you you've made the choice again that power of choice to be better, not bitter, to help others be better, not bitter, to help them through their bitter journey to betterness. Um, you're just an amazing person. Uh, I, I can't say enough about what you've done for people today who listen to this podcast and, and we'll get it out there. And um, I, I thank you for coming on, Campy. You're, you're, you're an amazing person. And let's keep growing this uh, Nicole's Voice nonprofit. Uh, I'll tell everybody out there, her goal is to build a building that she can bring people into and have a community of people that support each other, guide each other, help each other. And uh, it's going to get done. But uh, can't get done unless we have people helping. So I appreciate appreciate anybody out there who can help us and, and guide us through this. So Campy, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. You're amazing. Take care. I want to thank everyone for listening to the People Progressing Podcast. What a powerful addition this was today. Um, how many times I had goosebumps, tears in my eyes. Uh, just so proud of her, um, just so proud of, of my ex-student and, and, and what she's doing for people. Uh, so I appreciate you listening. You can get a hold of me, Coach Joe White, 97 at gmail.com, and I can connect you to Nicole and so forth if you need to. And I hope everyone's having a great day and keep progressing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.